Hi, I'm Todd Brugman from InterWest Distribution, one of the trainers here, and just wanted to go over a few tips uh, for experienced tinners and also new tinners that can hopefully help. One of the questions that I get is how can you actually cut uh, on the glass without damaging the glass or even putting a stainless blade on the glass. So what I've got here is an actual blade, uh, actually a carbon blade, uh, to prove a point, with a little piece of plastic core just on the tip, okay, and when I come even doing a rough cut or anything, this acts pretty much like a wall or a wallpaper uh, seam buster or anything like that. But I can actually get it going underneath the film, okay, with the plastic ride along the border. And that way, my blade never actually even touches the glass, okay. You can do it for your rough cut and also your final cut. Now moving on to the side glass, I get questions all the time as far as, hey Todd, how can we actually do this or I see tinners uh, basically using their factory edge down at the bottom aligning it first, dropping the window, cutting the top border, and then go ahead and cutting the sides or marking the sides. A lot of t new tinners have a hard time basically trying to make a uh, clean cut, especially when you're doubled up. So what we generally do is teach people how to go ahead, keep the film on, start with your top border cut first, Okay? That way, if you do get a jagged edge or anything else, you have room to move the film up, make a secondary cut. Okay? From that point in time, once you're happy with your top order, I can go ahead, fold this back, roll it up, and I can actually even use grease pencil to mark my sides and my bottom, depending on where I want my final cuts to be. Then go ahead, take my templates off to a glass table, and go ahead and take a straight edge, round my corners, and I'm a good to go, and never really touched a blade to the actual glass. Okay? When I come to actually cutting side wing windows, okay, some of the wing windows that are the most difficult have even, basically, rubber seals on the inside now. Okay, to do those, generally I like using an NT red dot because they have a finer adjustment on the actual blade track. And if I go out, actually just the first click out, okay, what it allows me to do is actually ride the rubber next to the seal against the actual blade holder like so, okay? So I never actually really risk cutting into the rubber. So if I lay my film down, feel where it actually starts, drop my blade, okay? Go ahead, slide that down, and let the blade actually do the work. What it allows me to do is make a nice clean cut all the way down that edge, okay? Same way, if I need to come back up, I'm just gonna drop that back into place. Go ahead up to my corner tear off my film, come back, do my bottom, and you're good to go. A few other quick tips. I always try to utilize a uh, vertical hanging spray board just because anytime you pull a liner, it does attract lint. So having it vertical, not on your back glass when you're trying to remove your liner, can help in reducing contamination. The last thing I wanted to share with you guys, heat guns, okay? A lot of people use a paint stripping heat gun similar to this. Not bad, but if you use some of the other heat guns out there, what you want to look for is a higher CFM uh, as far as your air movement goes, okay? These actually function better when you're shrinking and help the film shrink more evenly than getting hot spots with some of your typical paint stripping guns. So that's it for this week. Just hope those tips help and see you in the future.